Gratitude is the language of the heart. And any time when we express this, it comes definitely out of deep, deep love. Be grateful always. Hello, welcome. I am Father Sony Sebastian, a Divine Word Missionary Priest. First of all, I would like to wish everybody a happy, blessed Thanksgiving. May you have a wonderful celebration of this Thanksgiving with your family and with your loved ones. May make sure that you have this celebration the most safe way because we know we are going through a very difficult times during this pandemic. So we need to make sure that we have a wonderful celebration, but at the same time, keeping and observing all the safety measures. So have a wonderful celebration of Thanksgiving. I would like to use two passages uh, to reflect on our being grateful to God, as well as to understand the nature of God. So I like to read from, I, I like to take, uh, from the book of prophet Isaiah chapter 55 6 to 9 so also from the gospel of Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16 so let's listen to the readings first first from the prophet Isaiah seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake their way and sinners their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord to find mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, oracle of the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Now let's also listen to the gospel, you know, from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. And this is about the workers that were invited, that were brought to the vineyard. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. And those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give these last ones the same as you? Or 
Am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first and the first will be last. It's a very interesting passage and you know, very often, very often on the outset, anyone who listens to this story, story would always side with the grumblers. You know, they would side with those people who, who started grumbling because they worked the whole day and they were also treated exactly like those who came at the last hour of the day and worked only for one hour. And we would say, no, this is not right. This is unjust. They have not been treated rightfully. It is not fair. They should have been given a decent wage of at least something different from the ones who came at the last hour. That's our kind of, uh, you know, normal reaction. Any normal person would react to the story that way at the outset. You know, in order to understand this passage, we also need to realize and understand some of the system and the, and the situation at that time, during the time of Christ, and what and why this story made a lot of importance and and uh, you know relevance to the people of Israelites. Now remember, Jesus came, the Messiah, and he came with the message of repentance, and he started preaching to his own people. You know, his mission, as we understand often, his mission was directly towards his own people. Gradually, it, you know, it, it broadens. And so, he comes to his own people. They are the chosen ones. They are the ones who have been already selected and have been in the vineyard. And they have been working hard to make sure that this vineyard is kept alive, that they also remain part of this vineyard. Because this vineyard has been given to them by Yahweh, their God. And so they constantly kept working. And to this vineyard, to this vineyard comes foreigners. And when the foreigners come, they are not very happy. And not only that, the foreigners are coming at different times. They were not with them from the very beginning. And so, when these foreigners come, they think that they are going to take away every privilege that has been given to them, that was already there for, for the Israelites. And not only that, at the end of the day, they find that these foreigners, these people who came at the last hour and different times of the day to the vineyard. Remember, the vineyard is theirs. These people were given or were treated exactly the same way as those people, the Israelites. And we understand, of course, they were unhappy because they were there all the time. They thought that they were the privileged and the specially, you know, called chosen people. But others came and they also got the same kind of, you know, treatment. And that's where they were so unhappy. They grumbled and they wanted to, you know, they, 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 they raised their voice against their master for being unjust. And that's what we find here. So Jesus is very clearly, very clearly, Jesus is letting them know that for God, there is no favorites because everybody is a favorite of God. That's number one. And secondly, in the vineyard, in the kingdom of God, every person is treated equally by God. Now, that's a big challenge. So also, that's a question. What is the justice of God? What is the justice of God? Because we think that this is unfair. You know, in fact, 
to understand the fairness of God, the justice of God, we need to definitely follow Christ. And if we do not follow Christ, then, and if we do not listen to him and understand him, then we cannot be at his wavelength. In fact, the, this particular passage that we have from the Gospel of Matthew, it can be easily understood when we read that first passage from the, from the prophet Isaiah. Let's listen to that Isaiah's passage once more. And that makes it very clear. The nature of God. The justice of God. It says, Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way. The evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take Pity on him to our God who is rich in forgiving. That's, a, that, that, that's the first part. Who is rich in forgiving for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high as above earth. As my ways are above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. See how prophet Isaiah presents the nature of God. Because my nature is a human nature. I have my limitations. And my limitation is that I always think about myself. Whereas God is above everything. And that's why he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not like your ways. My thoughts and my ways are above everything. And that's where we need to comprehend and understand that way and the thoughts and the ways of God. Let's, let's look at that thought as well as the ways of God, understand His justice a little more deeply so that we will be able to be more grateful for everything that happens in our lives and in the lives of all those people who are around us. Stay with me. Let's listen to this message first. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, people like you and me talked to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present, involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms, we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of acts, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today. Welcome back. We've been reflecting on the nature of God. God who treats everyone equally. We've been looking at the passage where the master of the vineyard calls laborers to the vineyard at different times of the day. And at the end of the day, everybody was given the same wage. And of course, those who worked the whole day grumbled because those who worked the last hour of the day also received the same wage as those who worked for the whole day. So, as I mentioned, God's ways are not our ways, as Isaiah speaks. 
what is exactly God's way? What is God's justice? You know, from this particular passage that we have, we would, should understand that God is above everything. That the justice of God, the justice of God is love and compassion. It is His mercy that is beyond and above everything. And it is through this mercy and compassion of God that He rules. So also that is how He transmits his justice <clears throat> because God is merciful. He is compassionate. He does not, you know, he does not deal with people according to the kind of action that the person has done. Whereas, if the person turns to him, he is willing to accept and deal with him with his mercy and compassion. And that's the reason these people who come at different times of the day are also dealt by Jesus the same way. For God, the, he, he tries to make the difference between a need and a want. I need something, but I want also something else. God knows what is more important for me, and He gives me according to that. You remember, you know, look at these people, you know, those who were there waiting. They waited for the whole day to be hired. And that's why when the, when the master goes at the fifth hour of the day, the last hour of the day, at five o'clock, he says, why do you stand here uh, idle all the time? See, they say, nobody hired us. So they wanted to be, you know, hired. They had the intention, but nobody hired them. And that's where God, you know, comes in, and that's where His justice is at work. If they do not, uh, you know, work, if they get only the pay for one hour, their family is going to be affected. These are people who are daily, you know, laborers. Whatever they get for a day is the only means for them to take care of themselves as well as their family. And so they need a day's wage, not just an hour's wage. And that's the reason God's justice is based on the need and also the necessity of that person, not just what that person wants. And that's where we have to also make a balance, a strike, a, strike a deal with God. You know, often we go to God, we go to Jesus, we go to, to, to Him in prayer. And most of our prayers are def, you know, often for things that we need. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want that. Do we realize that if this is something that I really, really want, is it a need in my life? If, the, if it's a need, definitely God is going to grant this to us. You know, there are two things that we need to, I think, uh, you know, concentrate from this particular passage. Number one, the f that we ourselves should be grateful that our God is already, our God is ready to accept us back at any stage. Once we express sorrow for our sins and wish to be reunited with Him in love. God is ready to accept the sinner back at any time, even at the 11th hour. Look at that. Even at the 11th hour. God, is a, God has a notoriously short memory, you know. As far as our past is concerned, His memory is very short. And I like it. Because if God remembers everything that I have done, my past, I may not even be saved. I may not have a place in the kingdom of God. So this is something that we should deeply be grateful for. You know, this nature of God, this nature of God to accept me, to embrace me, to welcome me even every moment of my life. Even at that last moment, 
Look at what happens, you know, uh, in the scriptures, Christ, Christ has so beautifully portrayed this nature of God. You know, in the Gospel of Luke, we have the beautiful parable, you know, uh, the beautiful uh, you know, expression and the presentation of God as a good shepherd. Christ says, I am that shepherd. I know my own. They know me as well. And not only that, when one of my sheep, the strayed one, when one of my sheep strays and goes away, I will leave the 99 in the wilderness at the risk of being attacked by the wild animals. The 99, but I will go in search of the one that has run away. Because that one also means a lot to me. So that's number one. And number two, it's a strange way of looking at our Christian way of life to think that following it, we are losing out to people who live a life of sin and immortality. It is the person who lives a life based on the gospel, based on the gospel values of truth, love, generosity, sharing, and justice who experiences real happiness. The life of, a, of sin is often based on the futile, the vain search for happiness through pleasure and enjoyment. So real happiness, real happiness is not found in what we normally search for. Real happiness is found in love. Generosity, sharing, justice, true justice. And the true justice of God is compassion and mercy, forgiveness. And that's what we need. I think that is exactly what we need as we celebrate this Thanksgiving as well. You know, we are all going through a very hard time. I'm sure this year's Thanksgiving is not, like going, not going to be like the Thanksgiving in the past year or past years, all over the world for that matter, not only for us here in, our, in this country. We have to keep measures so that we shall be safe. So also, we need to be conscious about the safety of others. But all the same, it's nice to look at what has happened the whole year and be grateful to the Lord. You know, in my personal life, in my personal life, this year has been very eventful. After six years of being the leader, the provincial of the, the, pro, the province, the USW, the US West province here, I was able to hand over that responsibility to another person, another member of the society, to the new provincial. I'm grateful to the Lord for the six years that uh, he has led me. I think I did to the best of my ability to serve my brothers, my brother, you know, confreres as their leader, as their provincial. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to the Lord for guiding as well as leading his spirit, giving me that guidance, that wisdom. I know sometimes decisions are painful, but I was able to do that. But another moment that I cannot forget, I don't think I will ever forget in my life is something that happened in the month of August. My mom passed away. She was perfect in perfect health, but she had a fall. She broke a couple of her ribs and the ribs injured her lungs and she died of cardiac arrest. I couldn't go home. I couldn't be with my mom even at the last journey, at her last journey. I couldn't be there for the funeral or the burial. Neither, not only me, my rest of my siblings and the rest of the family, all because of this pandemic situation as well. And I don't know, I don't know if I should be grateful for that. I'm 
to a certain extent, I'm, I'm upset and angry with God for that matter because he took my mom away from me. But at the same time, as I was constantly reflecting on it, I said to myself, no, it's also a moment to thank. That's what my mom wanted all the time. She was a woman of prayer, of commitment. She spent her days and even her nights praying, praying the rosary, fasting. And so she was definitely longing for the moment to be with the Lord. Though we lost her, she gained. God, Jesus gained. I don't know if I'm right in saying that, but Jesus has her. I'm grateful because she didn't have to suffer. She went peacefully. And I'm sure this is not only me. There are many of you out there who would also, who have also gone through this kind of situation this year. A lot of our loved ones have left us unexpectedly. We are even today living at a time of uncertainty. And I think even in this uncertainty, we should still be looking at the Lord, standing before Him and say, thank you, thank you, because everything that happens in my life has a purpose. Because your justice is always compassion and mercy. So let's this thanksgiving be very grateful to the Lord who has kept us, who has guided us, who has protected us. I want to conclude this with a prayer. Pray with me. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for all your protection. We thank you for the innumerable blessings that you have given to us in our lives. Lord, help us constantly to realize your work and your ways in us and in our lives. Let us realize that every life comes along with cross. Sufferings. Sufferings are part of our human life. It is the sufferings and the struggle that makes our life more meaningful. Lord, help us to bear our crosses happily without complaining. So also, let this moment of thanksgiving be a moment of unity, peace and fellowship. May the good Lord continue to bless you and may the Blessed Mother who stood with her son, especially at the last moment of his life, Stay with you and with your family, blessing, comforting, and guiding you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you, and have a wonderful celebration. <laughs>